Charming day it has been, Miss Fairfax. Pray don't talk to me about the weather, Mr. Worthing. Whenever people talk to me about the weather, I feel quite certain that they mean something else. And that makes me so nervous. But I do mean something else. I thought so. In fact, I am never wrong. And I would like to be allowed to take advantage of Lady Bracknell's temporary absence. I would certainly advise you to do so. Mama has a way of coming back suddenly into a room that I've often had to speak with her about. Miss Fairfax, uh, ever since I met you, I've, I've admired you more than, than any girl I've ever, ever met since, well, since I met you. Uh, yes, I'm quite well aware of the fact. And I often wish that in public, at any rate, you had been more demonstrative. For me, you have always had an irresistible fascination. Even before I met you, I was far from indifferent to you. We live, as I hope you know, Mr. Worthing, in an age of ideals. The fact is constantly mentioned in the more expensive monthly magazines and has reached the provincial pulpit, I'm told. And my ideal has always been to love someone of the name of Ernest. <laughs> there is something in that name that inspires absolute confidence. The moment Algernon first mentioned to me that he had a friend called Ernest, I knew that I was destined to love you. You really loved me, Gwendolyn? Passionately. Oh, darling, you don't know how happy you've made me. My own Ernest. But you don't really mean to say you couldn't love me if my name wasn't Ernest. But your name is Ernest. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> I know it is. Uh, but suppose it, it was something else. Do you mean to say you couldn't love me then? <laughs> that is clearly a metaphysical speculation and like most metaphysical speculations, has very little reference to the actual facts of real life, as we know them. Well, <laughs> really, darling, uh, uh, to speak perfectly frankly, I don't much care for the name of Ernest. Oh, I don't think it suits me at all. It suits you perfectly. It is a divine name. It has a music of its own. It produces vibration. <laughs> <laughs> Well, really, Gwendolyn, uh, I must say that I think there are lots of other, much nicer names. Why, I think Jack, for instance, a charming name. Jack. No, there is very little music in the name Jack, if any at all, indeed. It does not thrill. It produces absolutely no vibrations. I have known several Jacks, and they all, without exception, were more than usually. Besides, Jack is notorious to Mr. City for John. And I pity any woman who is married to a man called John. <laughs> she would probably never be allowed to know the entrancing pleasure of a single room in solitude. <laughs> no. The only really safe name is Ernest. <laughs> Gwendolyn, I must get christened at once. I, I mean, we must get married at once. There is no time to be lost. Married, Mr. Worthing? Well, surely. Uh, you know that I love you. And you led me to believe, Miss Fairfax, that you were not absolutely indifferent to me. I adore you. But you haven't proposed to me yet. Nothing has been said at all about marriage. The subject has not even been touched on. Well, um, would it be all right if I proposed to you now? I think it would be an admirable opportunity. <laughs> and, to spare you any possible disappointment, Mr. Worthy, I think it only fair to tell you, quite frankly beforehand, that I fully intend to accept you. When <laughs> Yes, Mr. Worthy, what have you got to say to me? But you know what I've got to say to you. Yes, but you don't say it. <laughs> Gwendolyn, will you marry me? Now, of course I will, darling. How long you have been about it. I'm afraid you have had very little practice in how to propose. My own darling, I've never loved anyone in the world but you. Yes, <coughs> but men often propose for practice. I know my brother Gerald does. All my girlfriends tell me so. What wonderfully blue eyes you have, Ernest. 
They are quite, quite blue. Oh, I hope you will always look at me just like that. Especially when there are other people present. Gwendolyn! Mr. Worthing, arise, sir, from this semi-recumbent posture. It is most indecorous. Mama, I must beg you to retire. This is no place for you. Besides, Mr. Worthing is not quite finished yet. Finished what, may I ask? I'm engaged to be married to Mr. Worthing, Mama. You are engaged to no one. When you do become engaged to someone, I or your father, should his health permit him, will inform you of that fact. <laughs> a young girl's engagement should come upon her as a surprise, pleasant or unpleasant, as the case may be. <laughs> it is hardly a matter she could be allowed to arrange for herself. And now, Mr. Worthing, I have some questions to put to you. While I am making these inquiries, you, Gwendolyn, will wait for me below in the carriage. Mama! In the carriage, Gwendolyn. Thank you. 